Parker. We will start with the prayer by Commissioner Allen and the Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner Foster. Holiday. May we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much once again for allowing us to come together, Lord. Give us the wisdom, Lord, and the courage to you know, make the right decisions for the great and wonderful citizens of Anderson County, Lord. These things I pray. Amen. Amen. Kitchen salute pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Commissioner Dinenberg. Thank you. Um, we had requested some time uh, to recognize passing of one of our former commissioners, Whitey Hitchcock. His wife is not able to be here this evening. She was planning on coming, but something came up. So we're going to request that uh, we have the um, proclamation next month, but um, I think that it would be appropriate if we were to have a moment of silence. Thank you. Thank you. Let's have a moment of silence for former Commissioner Hitchcock. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, one other thing. Ms. Hitchcock had asked me to remind everybody, if you don't already know, she is having a celebration of life at their home um, Saturday. And um, I'm not remembering, but I will send out an email to everyone uh, who would request uh, the information tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Next we'll have the appearance of citizens. Anyone here to speak on an item that's not on the agenda, uh, come forward to the podium and uh, give us your name and address and you'll have uh, three minutes, please. Uh, hello, uh, commissioners. Good evening. Uh, my name is Keith Rice and I live um, uh, out near um, Anderson County Memorial Gardens on Oliver Springs Highway. Um, I have a brief statement I'd like to read to you, uh, um, <clears throat> and I ha have a copy if you'd like to have the copy afterwards. Um, I would like to raise a significant legal issue with a recently uh, approved rezoning to allow a Dollar General store to be located in Oliver Springs Highway next to the Marlowe Circle intersection. The rezoning resolution was adopted in November without, proper, without following proper public notice procedure, uh, which is Tennessee Zoning Code TCA 13-7-105B, as referenced by your planning office in their, in their documents. This requires that a 15-day notice be given in the local newspaper, the, the courier, uh, the Clinton Courier record, of course, in this case, of the county commission meeting date and a summary of the proposed rezonings. I questioned the planning and county commissions in December about where this notice was being given. They confirmed that no such notice was being put in the paper regarding monthly commission consent agendas for these rezonings. The county commission office said that they only put a list of the dates for the commission meetings for the full year in the paper in January, which I saw was in this January meeting. When I pointed out the public notice requirements to the county commission office, they seemed unaware of the specifics and asked for a copy of them. Now in January of this year, I, I, I see finally for the first time that a public notice was put in the courier record classified 15 days ahead of this meeting and, the, and, and also a summary of the rezonings for this meeting for consideration today, which is a good step going forward, of course. But this fur further confirms to me that the proper procedure has not been followed in the past. 
And what we are requesting of the Board of Commissioners in this case, um, in, in the Tennessee zoning rules, under the same code section as the, as the procedure, it offers a procedural defects um, procedure, which says where a zoning resolution has been adopted without proper procedure, the procedural defects can be cured by reenactment of the resolution by proper procedure. As such, we request the zoning approval of the November 21st meeting be withdrawn and a new 15 days notice be published so that residents of the community can have the legally required notice to attend the next commission meeting and raise their full concerns about the proposed Dollar General business location there. Since the county commission office failed to provide the required legal notice, we feel that it's the board of, that the board of commissioners should be made aware of this issue and, and be first given the opportunity to redress the situation. And I guess my time is, is up, but uh, if I can be happy to answer any further questions about this. Um, if you can give me your uh, contact information, I'll, I'll get with our chief deputy, Annette, and uh, I believe we do notice every meeting, at least in the newspapers every month. And Only the planning commission uh, meetings are given six days ahead in the paper, and the one for November was unfortunately not even put in the classified section, it was put in another part of the paper. But the, you know, I, I, I have all the count, I have all the papers for November and earlier, and every month I've looked, the county commission meeting has not been listed in the agenda in, in the courier record. But it was in January for the first time this year. Let me, uh, let me get your contact information and our law director's out tonight, but I'll, we'll follow, we'll follow up with you. And Okay. Find All out right. what we need to. All right. We need I appreciate to it. I'll, Thank you. I'll, I'll put my uh, contact on this and give it to you okay. shortly. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other any comments, commissioners? Uh, yeah, Mar Margie, did do you know if, if were the the certified letters sent out to the surrounding owners or was it? Do you know anything about the the on notice? The planning proceed? commission. Yes. Okay. But we don't don't have anything to do with the full commission right so on the planning commission yes sir okay and posted and we got our new signs right here so everybody can see them but I would note that those letters are only sent out after the planning commission meeting about two weeks afterwards and they, they do certainly tell two weeks about before this, this upcoming county commission meeting but there are many other residents in the area that would like to comment on on that since they weren't exactly adjoining to, to that, they had really no way of knowing about the, uh, the meeting. And this is my neighbor who is one of those in that situation, Ms. Shoemaker. And so uh, the general problem is with the notification for all the people that are affected in that area, not, not just the adjoining residents. And ideally, we'd like to have the, the sign put up even before the planning commission meeting. The sign won't be put up until two weeks after. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments from commission? Uh, yeah, just come up to the podium and state your name and address. I'm Bonnie Shoemaker, and I live at 453 Oliver Springs Highway, almost directly across, kind of catty corner from the proposed construction. And I'll echo Mr. Rice's comments uh, that there was inadequate public notice and I have spoken with uh, many neighbors surrounding in the area and they have just become aware of it when I told them. So, and I, and I see the new sign and that isn't anything like what was posted, what was put there in October, November. It was, I have a picture of it, it was tiny. But I just ask that we give the people who are affected, the neighboring, neighboring people, the opportunity to comment. If you want to leave your contact information too, I'll make sure, I sure we get back to mm -hmm. both of you. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else in the audience would like to speak on anything? Oh, Marge, do you want to respond? I'd like to say we do post it two weeks prior to the meeting, and we post the sign two weeks prior to the meeting. So, and you know, there's been several times that signs have been removed. So, 
Prior to which meeting? Pardon? Prior, prior to which meeting? The county planning commission. commission. Uh, that's not the information I was given from the planning commission when I stopped by and talked to them. Uh, we do it two weeks prior to the planning commission. We send it to the newspaper and we post it, a sign out there. Yeah, the signs were 18 by 18. They're not big signs like this one, but they are visible. Well, let, let's not have the back and forth. Let me get with the law director and we'll make sure we've noticed it properly and I'll get back with you a bit. Okay, thank you, Margie. Um, Annette, do you know if the notice went to the... Not in. It was not noticed in the paper. Well, the planning commission report. No, the this meeting, this uh, the one that he's talking about in November. It was that was that the only month that wasn't no, noticed. I Commissioner Mays. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would just ask that when Mr. Yeager gets back that we you know, discuss with him and, and try to gather all this information try to, instead of trying to figure it out piece by piece here tonight. If we could just get with all the interested parties and figure out you know, what notices went where. Any other comments? Okay, and be, be sure and leave your contact information and we'll get back to you. Does anyone else have anything to speak on that's not on the agenda? Okay, if not, we'll move on to the uh, approval and correction of agendas. We'll start with a consent agenda. Uh, Commissioner Isabel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to move the uh, Anderson County Tourism from consent to full. Uh, just got a question or two on that. Okay. I would like to add some uh, discussion about ACWA. I had a uh, constituent that lives up on Val Mountain and really praised ACWA, and I just want to speak about that, please, under operations. Okay. Do you want to do you want to put the tourism just under committee reports? Please. Okay. Any other items for the uh, consent agenda, Commissioner Vandegrift? Yes, uh, I would like to add to the consent agenda, the highway department inventory list. That's the annual inventory that yes. the road superintendent submits. Okay, anyone else? Commissioner McCamey. Motion, Mo to, approve. motion to approve as amended, seconded by Commissioner Mays. Any other discussion on the consent agenda? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move to the regular agenda. We've got uh, tourism under the board report and uh, ACWA under operations. Any other changes yeah, to the? To, to clear. Oh, okay. Brian, can you clear that board, please? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to request anyway. Then. Yeah, Commissioner Yeager. Okay. I have two items I'd like to add. One to purchasing for the auction of 135 Iroquois Lane in Clinton. And for budget, I'd like to add in the County Buildings Department insurance recovery uh, increase, yeah, insurance recovery uh, from damage. The, from the flooding? Yes. Okay. Any, anything else for the regular agenda? Do we have a motion to approve as amended? Motion by Commissioner Beauchamp, seconded by Commissioner Allen. Any other discussion on the uh, regular agenda? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. <coughs> Next, we have the public hearing report, Vice Chairman Val. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Prior to the meeting tonight for the six o'clock agenda, we had a public hearing uh, on two uh, zoning requests. The first one, the resolution number 23-1-1072, amending the county zoning resolution to include the property 
at 3433 Lake City Highway, Rocky Top, parcel 035, tax map 030 from A2, Rural Residential District, to I-2 Heavy Industrial District, and I so move for approval. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion on approval? Let's go to the board and vote. Motion passes unanimously. And also, Mr. Chairman, we had a public hearing on resolution number 23-1-1073 requesting amending the Anders County Zoning Resolution to include the property at 122 Mountainside Lane, Rocky Top, parcel 030, tax map 008 from A2, Rural Residential District, to A1, Agriculture Forestry District. Commissioner Isabel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my main concern on this one is the road is so narrow, and we've already turned down a couple uh, large developments because I think it's Buffalo Road. Uh, being so narrow about not being able to pass and that's my concern there I don't know if we could go back and do some type of study on the road or anything like that see if it can pass but uh, that's my concern Commissioner McCamey Margie is this uh, it's just been approved by the Planning Commission Okay. <coughs> motion to approve? Yes. We got a motion uh, seconded by Commissioner Allen to approve Commissioner Mays. He is. Is Danny still here? No. Okay. Uh, I guess one of my concerns, I have him somewhat familiar with the area, is um, the infrastructure. I know that the city provides, uh, I believe, the is it the sewer up there? Yeah, we got sewer um, the infrastructure issues, and then I would just would have liked to have heard from Danny or Marjorie may know. Just um, I know in the past there's been some flooding issues in that area, and I'm just curious if if Planning Commission A took that up and B if they did, kind of what their their thought was on on the flooding issues there. Um, the, it's the lower section that's flooding and he was talking about putting in gravel and stuff just to get the grade up a little bit but I don't know what his plans are as far as that is but um, yes it is in a floodplain okay. thank you mm -hmm. any other discussion Commissioner Denenberg thank you mr. chairman um, I'm a little concerned about voting on this at this point because there seems to be quite a few questions that members of the board have uh, brought up. So I think it would be a good idea if we postpone this. A motion to yes, let me make a motion to postpone the vote on this. Till next month. So is that an? That's an amendment. Yes, you can amend the motion to approve and postpone until a later date or defer motion to defer action. Yeah. Thirty days. Do you want to make a defer defer this? Thirty, 30 days. Yes. Till. Okay. We got a motion to defer. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Isabel. All those in favor of deferring 30 days, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion passes. Unanimous. Thank you. Is that all from the? Public hearing. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. That is all from public hearing report. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next, we'll move to committee reports. Start with purchasing report by Finance Director Robbie Holbrook. Sure. Yeah. I just have one question. Is there anything that I can do, or is that something that y'all are going to take care of to check on the? 
Because I, I can't, I drove all the way from Florida yesterday to get up here, and now I got to come back next month. Uh, it and, sounds <clears> like um, they had some specific questions for uh, Danny Phillips with planning, maybe. So I think. Well, I have some questions too that I'm sure he and or his son. Is your son staying? Pardon me. Is your son staying? Staying there now? Yes. I yes. Mean, will he be here for this month? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Will he be able to answer questions that we may have? Uh, depending on what the questions are. And I, I've got a surveyor, Bill Easter, that can probably answer them. Okay. Um, that information would be helpful. Well, I don't, I'm not sure exactly. If someone can tell me what you need, then I can, you know, get the information from Mr. Easter. Well, I know for a fact, personally, I don't know the property. I mean, it's on one side of Anderson County, and I want another. Let's. Uh, I would. Let's get with. Since Danny's gone, we'll. we'll Danny's got your contact information. Yeah, everything. Yeah, I, I, we'll, I, I can get in contact. We'll get in with touch Danny. and. And on the next 30 days, we'll make sure we've got okay. the questions. Because I know Danny mentioned to me about, you know, getting approval and then what I have to do in the back for the creek. But if there's anything I can do or, you know, I can get that from Danny. Then. Okay. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. For the purchasing committee contracts that were approved by the law director, there was one Blankenship Partners from the mayor's office. Motion uh, by Commissioner Yeager, seconded by Commissioner Mays. Any discussion? Let's go to the board and vote. <coughs> Motion passes unanimously. Okay, thank you. Um, contracts pending law director approval, they've all been approved now. The first one, Safe Industries, was deferred to next month. So um, two through five, with five being a lease for community meditation, mediation services, are um, all approved now by the law director. Motion by Commissioner Yeager, seconded by Commissioner Isabel. Any discussion? Let's go to the board and vote. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, thank you. And under other business, there were two uh, vehicles surplus on Gov deals with starting bids at two hundred and fifty dollars from EMA from emergency management. Motion by Commissioner Mays, seconded by Commissioner Smallridge. Any discussion? Let's go to the board and vote. Motion passes unanimously. And under number two, the status update on the Tourism Welcome Center. Um, the mayor let the committee know that the bidder agreed to walk away from the sale, so there was really no action or information other than that. Um, on the added item to the agenda, in December, there was a um, land surplus from owned by the Board of Education in Iroquois Lane and Indian Hill Subdivision in Clinton. <laughs> And that has been auctioned, and the purchase price of thirty-six eight fifty, with a starting bid at fifteen thousand. So, need motion. approval for that tonight. Motion to approve by Commissioner Smallridge, seconded by Commissioner Allen. Any discussion, Commissioner Isbell? Yes. Uh, that was purchased by the school board, wasn't it? Yes, it originally. was. Originally, mm -hmm. you know what they paid for it? Six thousand. Okay. And then we came real close to what the uh, what is appraised for too, didn't we? Uh, yeah. Well, no, it was actually it was what was it, Catherine? You remember? It was well up more than that. The appraisal from the county. That's what the bidding started at was fifteen, but I I had that in December. I apologize. I should have had that tonight. Well, that's okay. I've got it in my brief. It was but, less than the thirty-six. Yeah, 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 we're real close to it. Yes. Any other discussion? Let's go to the board and vote. This is yes is to finalize the sale. <laughs> Motion passes unanimously. Yes, Commissioner uh, McCain. I've got a question. I guess it's for Robbie, but what the monies, does it go back to the school department? It will or? be receded into the Board of Education, one fund 141, yes, sir. Okay. Proceeds from sale. Okay. 
Uh, any other questions on the purchasing agenda? Okay, budget. The cash and fund balance report ending December 31st, 2022. The general fund um, restricted funds are 1.1 million, committed are at 1.6. Assigned funds, 3.7 million. Unassigned fund balance is at 9.5 million for a total fund balance of 15 million 982 459 and cash 15 million 520 uh, general purpose schools total fund balance 13.1 million cash 17.2 <coughs> any questions on the fund balance report okay sales tax really quickly um, for november the county as a whole was up three percent four million eighty one thousand seven thirty seven Anderson County's portion up 6% at $496,087. Any questions on sales tax? Commissioner Isabel. What, which month does that reflect? Is that November? That's November. That will okay. be the no, that's November month, yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next I have is the ARP projects update that uh, we've been providing monthly now. Um, the only thing that really changed from last month is there was more expended year to date. Another 294,288.85 was expended from last month. So it just means we're finishing or some of the projects that we have ongoing are we're starting to pay for now. So and we did we do have one budget amendment this month using ARP funds for the uh, Slover Chimes. So I'll make you all aware of that when we get to it. But. Commissioner Mays. Does this amount uh, reflect that 250000 It does not. We have not put that money back in yet. We were waiting to see the cost of um, any cost associated with the purchase, you know, okay. transferring the land and stuff. We did do a, a survey. All right. We, Thank you. That will probably happen by next month, though. Um, okay. Okay, moving on to budget amendments and group four appropriations. There are six appropriations. Number six is the use of the ARP funds at $18,635. Seeking approval as a group, I can answer any questions. Commissioner Denenberg. <coughs> I make a motion that we'll approve. Got a motion by Commissioner Denberg, seconded by Commissioner Val. Any discussion? Let's go to the board and vote. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, under group five transfers non-school, that um, there was one, it, the motion failed in budget committee for the election department. I did talk to Mark and he is gonna bring that back to a budget committee next month and he said he would be there. So, um, we will deal with that one next month. And group six appropriations that affect the general fund unassigned fund balance, there is one from county commission for $1,750. Looking for approval. We got a motion. Well, you've motion. already got it. Motion in a second. Any discussion? Let's go to the board and vote. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, group seven miscellaneous. Um, we started the fiscal year 23-24 budget last month. Um, Commissioner Beauchamp made a motion and seconded by Commissioner Denenberg to approve the budget guidelines, forms, and the calendar as presented. I don't need commission to, to vote on this. I'm just, that motion was passed. Um, section B, Highland Communications site prep costs was removed from the agenda. Under section C, there were two um, Budget amendments that we've already voted on tonight, um, and old business had nothing. Under group eight, additional items not discussed during budget committee, I have two of those. One is the um, the building at the drive through I gave you all a hard copy of, of a change on that one tonight. We did get our, we heard from insurance recovery and we're gonna receive $33,216.69. So the additional 11,570.31 will come from unassigned fund balance for a total of 44,787. That was the lowest bid on that <coughs> project as well. 
I've got a motion for approval by Commissioner Mays, seconded by Commissioner Allen. Any discussion? Let's go to the board and vote. Motion passed unanimously. Also, um, for the same winter storm, winter weather, cold weather, the, uh, the school department is looking for um, approval for $250,000 um, budget amendment for building improvements from committed for capital outlay. I you know they had a lot of issues at Lake City Elementary for one. Motion by Commissioner Smallridge, seconded by Commissioner Isbell. Any discussion? Let's go to the board and vote. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, that's all I have tonight. From Appreciate it. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Wandell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hey, <clears throat> Robbie. Yeah. I didn't get a chance to ask you, but I want on ARP funding. Yes, sir. Uh, you had something highlighted here. Let's see. It was the countywide assessment for water sewer planning. I had a lot of that just based on some questions and. Um, that were asked in budget committee. I know you'd asked about that one, so I highlighted it to get more information. That's just a note for me. I sh probably should have done this over and not had turned in a highlighted copy. Oh, no, it's okay. I, I just, I had a and question. also did the other one because that's the one that has the extra $250,000 in it, the 500000 yeah. I guess my question on the countywide assessment, um, was that bid out? It's a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Professional service, and it doesn't have to be bidded out. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Foster. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> Tim, this question for you. On the, will there be insurance recovery on that till y'all be filing the insurance? Okay. That would be free. Yeah, it will, it will go into a revenue code and roll into fund balance at the end of the year. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is the director of schools, Dr. Parrott. Chairman there said, yeah, uh, that, uh, I think the, the one, uh, the one bid just to replace is about 92,000 and we've not got the bid to, for the cleanup. We had to have another company come in. Uh, it did three classrooms and the whole office complex. And it was, uh, it, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't, it, it was a water line, but it was our, the source water line. I don't know the right thing, but but it's the chilled water, so it was the hot water. So once it froze and then it busted and everything started back, uh, when they went into one of the rooms, it was over 90 degrees in there and 100% humidity. So everything in those classrooms had to be thrown away. The books, the uh, uh, ceiling tiles, the whole nine yards, the uh, flooring had to be taken out and abated and all that stuff. So right now the uh, at Lake City Elementary School, the uh, whole office complex, the, the secretary and, and the bookkeeper, they're out in the hallway and they've took one of the uh, classrooms that they were doing their, P, their professional development meetings in. That's where the assistant principal and the principal are. So hopefully we'll get that started back real soon. So uh, There was another one at Norris Middle School, but we caught that. That was in a while and we caught it before the, uh, it did any damage. Uh, just a couple of other things. Uh, we do have uh, just an update on Norris Middle School. They have started on the roof. They've got all the concrete blocks done. They've started on the roof. Hopefully in a couple of weeks, it'll be in the dry. Uh, Mr. Myers it should get uh, approval this week on the grant to build the welding and, and uh, ag uh, center at Clinton High School. Uh, the, uh, the place now we have the, the old house is gone and everything I want to, uh, thank Mr. Long for helping us with that. And so we're excited about that. We're working with Michael Brady on that. Uh, the other thing, just, just kind of, uh, as you know, every month the school board, uh, they look at a different group of our employees and honor them. And this month it's our nutritional staff. And they do a fantastic job. When you think about, they feed over 5,000 students every day, breakfast and lunch, and they do a great job for it. And uh, Miss Burrell and her group, they really and truly 
if you go out, the food is, is, is good at the schools. The, the ladies, you know, they're the first one there in the morning, and they're the ones that greet the kids every morning for breakfast, uh, you know, along with the principal, but they do a fantastic job. So this month, the schools will be honoring them. So just want to take a, and thank them for what they do. And I will take any questions. Commissioner Isbell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, a couple of things. One is I really appreciate Assistant Superintendent uh, Greg Deal. Because when that happened at the Lake City Elementary, I had several phone calls from parents, you know, really concerned what was going on. He was really on top of things. And you turned it around really quick. Yes. Yeah. And uh, did a good job I mean, it was just a terrific response. It did a great job in trying to get everything up and going and making other uh, accommodations for the students and the teachers just to keep classes going yeah. they, they and and our staff you know as you know that we were on break right then and uh, the staff they come in uh, you had staff from other schools come in the maintenance staff worked overtime just trying to get everything back because like you say when they went in they was four inches of hot water in the in every room so in, in those classrooms yeah i mean it's like an army just come in and just took care of things they did a great job yep and the other thing is is on the third grade retention yes i've had several you know parents concerned some other community leaders really talking about that because the way i understand it is this third grade retention is going to be based on how they score on their tcat yes. and there's a lot of students that don't score well on tcat but they're excellent students yep. and their grades may be higher yep. uh, is that something the school board's taking we they the school board did a resolution back last fall and and i've talked with uh Senator Manali and I've talked with Mr. Reagan and one of the things we want to do is be able to it, before it's always been a school it's been a district decision and we right. worked with the parents and I think we've done a great job on that but they have taken that away and now if a student doesn't score uh, above the 40th percentile even if they score above the 40th percentile they have to go to summer school and then they have to do tutoring every day and uh, you know, really and truly, uh, third grade's too late. Uh, I agree. We, we think that if, if a student, you, a lot of times if a student's retained, we see a whole lot more positive uh, outcome when it's either in kindergarten or first grade. So we're working with some of them at the, uh, the state office, and I think we're going to see some movement on that. Uh, again, like you say, it's one test on one day. Yeah. And, and I don't, I hate to see that. I hate to see it take out a local control too because, you know, there's students that may have, they don't know all the situations. When you look at a test score, it's just a test score. And we have to look at the whole child. So I, I take your comment too, and I'll, I'll make sure they understand that. Yeah, and if, if you need any help from this board, I'm sure that, uh, that they'll come together and give you some support on that. Thank you. Commissioner Allen. Yeah, just out of curiosity, um, how many staff do you have on that nutritional staff? And um, how many do they feed a day? They, they feed, we feed right at about 5,000 students. Uh, some of them bring their lunch, yeah. uh, feed them lunch and breakfast and a snack. And yeah. I, you've asked me a question I don't know. <laughs> uh, we have at least, uh, at our small schools, we have two. And at our high schools, we'll have as many as 12 on staff. Yeah. So I would say probably somewhere around 70 to 100 staff members. And about 5,000 students yes. are fed each day. Very good. Yep. Commissioner Vandegrift. Dr. Parrott, I just had a question. I don't want to follow up with third grade retention. Yes. Uh, how are students with IEPs affected they, by this? They are, they are exempt from that third grade retention. Okay, but yeah. they're still required to take the T. Yeah, they're still cap. required to take the key T cap, and we still uh, we will still do uh, summer programming with them, but they will not be held back unless it's something that the IP team makes that decision. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank, Thank you all. Appreciate it. If you have any questions, just give me a call. Thank you. Hey, oh, oh, one thing I meant to. I forgot this. So, as I've had some questions about the lawsuit and the, uh, at Clinton High School with the softball field, we do have a new uh, a council on board. Uh, is Taylor Forster out of Knoxville? They've done some land use uh, issues before, and we have a mediation meeting set up in Knoxville on Thursday. So hopefully we'll see some movement on that. So 
I know the ladies are really wanting to get that done, and so are we, because every month we let, wait, we lose another eight to ten thousand dollars as things go on up. So we want to try to get that taken care of. So, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Next up, we've got County Mayor Mayor Frank. Any, any, no, no action. Any questions for the mayor? Maybe we'll maybe we'll we'll get to it, but um, if I may, this is about resolution 1074, and I was this is the one uh, the storage facility on Cobb Hollow Road, Rocky Top. Oh, okay. I think that's under operations agenda. Okay. All right. Okay, our law director is out tonight, but we've got uh, we don't have any, any no action items. Okay, any any questions or anything? No. All right, we'll move on to committee and board reports. We'll start with operations committee uh, report. Chairman Isabel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Really, the only action item that we had was Commissioner Anderson made a motion to approve the law director draft resolution or a letter T dot regarding the state of Tennessee's intent to construct a salt bin at an exit off the interstate in Rocky Top, seconded by Commissioner McCamey. Motion passed unanimously for the full commission for approval. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to add that uh, the mayor of, of Rocky Top is here to speak to uh, Mr. Gary Templin okay. uh, on this. <coughs> As Commissioner Isabel said, uh, we are opposed to the uh, construction of the TDOT facility on Cobb Hollow Road. That is a ideal commercial piece of property, a ready access to exit 128 on and off I-75 granted. No one's done any, anything out there since Jimmy Myers cut that place flat back in the mid-70s, but is a, it is a very developable piece of commercial property. Be a great place for a Waffle House. But um, we have a, uh, a bad feeling that if, if they develop this property, if TDOT develops this property, it will stymie any other development on that exit. We are voting on a resolution ourselves this Thursday night opposing this. Is there any questions? Mm -hmm. Commissioner Denenberg. Who is we? The Rocky Top Commission. Thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner Allen. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, um, is, is there another location you would recommend? Uh, uh, for the approximately a mile north on I-75, the state owns property. That, it used to be a way station, yeah. uh, both on the north and southbound uh, lanes of I-75 that would be ideal for yeah. such a site. It has power and, and it's, it's large enough to do what they want to do. And, and I've seen them do that at other yeah. locations on I-40 and I-81. Is there, is there a reason why that wasn't suggested earlier before it got to this point to, you know, maybe have T dot use the, you know. I, I cannot answer that, sir. Have you, have you talked with like the mayor or T dot people about this have you guys gotten together and tried to come up with some solution uh, no sir I've just been in office about 45 days so. <laughs> okay. I see I see okay thank you any other questions thank you thank you and I so move on that resolution mr. Okay. chairman motion by Commissioner Isabel seconded by Commissioner Val Do you have a question, Commissioner Yeager? Just All right, let's go to the. Uh, oh, I just oh, want to sorry. add one other thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Commissioner, I'll, I'll yield to Commissioner Waddell first. Oh, okay. Well, Commissioner I Waddell. just thank you, Commissioner Isabel. I, I just wanted to ask the mayor. I mean, I saw her email come through, and it sounded as if the mayor had done some preliminary work to get this investment in the area to create some opportunity. I, I respect what Mayor Templin is saying and Commissioner Isabel, but. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to hear from the mayor on her thoughts um, before I make a decision. Good 
Um, thank you, Commissioner. And when I, I sent out an email um, alerting when I got the copy of the resolution from Jay, uh, it's not something where I want to get in the middle of anything with our cities. I totally respect their decision, but I did want to make everyone aware that I did write a letter of support um, for that location and for TDOT to put that facility um, there back in um, April, uh, was it 2021, I believe. Um, and uh, at that time, um, my feeling in writing the letter of support was also that the, loca the local government would have a say because the property did have to be rezoned. And so uh, I'm very respectful too of, obviously there are new elected officials um, that are totally within, as we all, we all have different opinions and new, many new officials here that may have different opinions than uh, the old council. So I just wanted to disclose that, that I had written that letter of support and I'm not up here to, to fight one way or the other. Mr. Chairman, if I could follow up, and, and I just want to echo what you said, Mayor. I didn't take the email as right. you're opposing it in any way or trying to challenge, but as we both know, when these resolutions go to the state, if we're all, not all together, then usually causes problems. So right. it sounds like you've done some work on the front end to get it there, which is an investment from TDOT to be in our county. Uh, I, again, I understand the mayor's point. Would it, do we have to make this decision, to, decision tonight? Is it something we can... Uh, delay for 30 days maybe yourself and, and Mayor Templin can get together and maybe together we can make it go up the road a mile to that old location I, I don't know but it before you know I, I hate to vote one way or the other right. I mean I like to support sure. my commission when they have a request and I usually do um, but I don't also want to lose the opportunity altogether either. So. Uh, absolutely, and, and I agree, and that's why I, I let everyone know that I couldn't sign this resolution because I had worked on the front end to support this and, and the project location. So, um, you know, Anderson County has a good relationship with TDOT, and I, I want to maintain that good relationship with TDOT. So it isn't anything... Um, against the city i mean i want to do everything i can to help the city as well so uh, uh, i'm happy to reach out if it is something uh, i don't know what the timeline is i have no idea where tdot is in this project uh the city the mayor would know more about that um don't oh the city manager <laughs> uh, yeah they came to uh, planning commission i want to say in august uh, for their site plan review um, because they are a government agency using it for government um, purposes. They didn't have to have approval. They did um, submit the site plan um, prior to that. And so uh, it was reviewed by the city and it met, according to our planner, met everything it needed to to do uh, what they wanted. So it didn't have to be, we thought originally it had to be rezoned, but according to our planner uh, with the city, it did not have to be rezoned. Oh, and okay. so, but they did have to submit a site plan. So I don't know timetable, they haven't, pulled any permits. Um, last time I talked to them, their goal was to have at least a salt bin in by this winter, but then that <coughs> did not happen. So, um, but the whole, at some point they want to move all their operations from Clinton to the, there from their site here at J.D. Arnell. That's about all I have on it. Commissioner is. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate Commissioner uh, Wandell too and, and his statements, because uh, we echo the same and with the mayor. Uh, and what we're doing as, as the local commissioners is we're acting on what, on behalf of what the mayor and the city council would like. And I can see both sides. And what I would hope that this resolution would probably do is just bring the state back into the new administration, try to work things out. Because, you know, I think if, if as soon as you get off the exit and you see a salt bin, that's a little unsightly. Uh, they've got them, you know, it's up on 63 as you go into right there as you start on the on Ida, you'll see it up on 81 you'll see the salt bins and they're actually you know at the waste the old waste stations and things of that sort so maybe it might be that they decide uh to move the salt bin up there maybe do an operation center there where it looks you know like nice development or something like that but at least maybe it brings uh 
the state back to you know back to the new administration and says you know let's let's, let's discuss this so Commissioner Allen Thank you. yeah mm -hmm. I think it may be wise for us to uh, maybe have a motion to postpone and that would give the, the mayor both both the mayors and the city to just get together with T dot and maybe come up with something that works for everybody Commissioner Val. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I looked over the <clears throat> Mayor Frank's email, and then I remember some conversations from the past, and I don't know if uh, Commissioner Foster or Mayor Frank or Mayor Templin can answer this question, but when they first appeared at the City Planning Commission for this project, was it supposed to be more than just a salt bin? Uh, I'll answer. Yeah, so if you'll look in the packet, the, that was handed out that is what that came from TDOT that was submitted for their site plan so their when they came to the city it was for their operations center it's gonna the be a building building so garage shed um, and now it's just a salt bin that was their plans for this winter to get the salt bin in because they don't have a salt bin at the Clinton location because of it was blown down by a storm and they can't rebuild from what they have told us they can't rebuild because the TVA lines <coughs> Uh, because it's permanent structure so but then that that did not happen they did not get the salt bin um, this layout is what they submitted to us on their how they're going to if they proceed with it um, that's what was submitted to the Planning Commission are there any and I guess I'm asking a rhetorical question are there any salt bins anyone has seen that has a building structure there with it in our location our locale our area Okay. Yeah, so All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So, any any other discussion? Right now, uh, Commissioner is. I would, and, and thank you for the opportunity to speak again on the subject. But I want to say is I've always had an excellent uh, relationship with TDOT as well, Mark Nagy and and all those people. When I've reached out to them, they've always responded with everything, every request we've ever asked from District Four. So, I want to give them the most respect as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so right now we've got a motion by Commissioner Isabel, seconded by Commissioner Val, to move forward with the uh, resolution from Operations Committee. No other discussion. Let's go to, to the board and vote. Mr. Chairman, just for clarity, yes is to oppose. Uh, yes, yes it would be the resolution okay. to oppose. Yes. Right. Is there a motion for deferral? Did, yeah. Did Commissioner Allen make think. a motion to defer? Yes, I would like. For 30 days. Okay. Do we have a we got a motion to defer? Do we have a second for deferral? Second. Second. Commissioner Smallridge seconds the deferral motion. Okay. Let's. Can you clear the board? We have right. to proceed either abstain oh, okay. or do something here. We're in the middle of a vote. <laughs> if, if we go back, it'll bring you back to this position on your next vote. This must be answered. Okay. Okay. If everybody is staying, we can cancel this. Yeah. So now we can go to the postpone. This is just clear in the board. This is an actual vote. This is a, we're voting to yeah. abstain. Yeah. Okay. So we've got a deferral motion by Commissioner Allen, seconded by Commissioner Smallridge, to defer this until 30 days. 30 days. Let's go to the board and vote on the deferral. Uh, Yeager, we need Yeager and Val to monitor motion. Or, uh, well, it's it's. Uh, Commission, it's Allen and Smallridge for the deferral motion. I don't have the um, motion key. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. This is a deferral motion. <laughs> All right. 
eight, yes, six, no. So the deferral motion fails. So do we just <coughs> automatically revert back to the? Back to okay, the we're back to the motion by uh, Commissioner Isabel, seconded by Commissioner Val, to move forward with the resolution. They need to go ahead and make yeah, comments. hit. Yeah, um, if you want to make that. <coughs> This is for the original motion to move forward with the resolution opposing the location. Yeah. Well, it's asking them to consider the location further north, yeah. All right, motion passes, 12 yes, two no, one abstain. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, and under uh, the ACWA and the highway department as well, the uh, residents of Val Mountain, uh, those without water for a couple of days, and ACWA's phone lines were actually down, so they couldn't get in touch with anybody, so they reached out to them in Man, they were just, ACWA was Johnny on the spot, uh, getting them water. And uh, I think Cody Ridner was one of the ones that worked for ACWA, was up there long into the night, making sure that they had everything. And uh, so they just wanted to acknowledge everything that ACWA had done for them, um, along with the highway department where they resurfaced the road, which in all the bad weather they've had, when you go up on the mountain, you can look straight out and see the original Rocky Top. I mean, it's just, that's how high that is if you've never been on a Bow Mountain. But uh, the, the rotary services really helped. They just wanted to say thank you. <coughs> and that concludes the Operations Committee report, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, Chairman Isbell. Next, we'll have the Animal Care Advisory Committee report, Chairman Wandell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Animal Care Advisory Committee met on January 4, 2023. Um, I'm going to read through these motions and then just get a motion to accept them all at the end. Um, I'm not going to read all of them, but uh, the ones that were made. Uh, first motion uh, was by Stephen Newby. Made a motion to email the rescue intake questionnaire to the committee for review and feedback. That was uh, seconded by Lauren Belosky. The motion carried. Um, then there was a motion by Stephen Newby to have meetings every other month beginning February with special me meetings when needed. That was seconded by Lor Lauren Belosky. That motion passed. And then under old business, uh, Joe Hall made a motion to review all previous motions for prior meetings. That was seconded by Veda Oberlin. And uh, the last one I have here, I believe, uh, Lauren Belosky made a motion to add the mayor, director, and the veterinarian to the agenda for all future meetings with monthly updates and written reports. Seconded by Commissioner McCamey. Um, and then Lauren Belosky made a motion to have an update from Rob Gray and include the sheriff's office if necessary. Seconded by Stephen Newby. Any questions on any of those motions? Mayor, do you have any questions on those? I guess the thought was, Mayor, to, to give you and the department a spot if you wanted to come and ask questions. or So uh, I'll present all those minutes as presented, Mr. Chairman, and I'll make that motion. Motion. Motion by Commissioner Wendell, uh, second by Commissioner Denenberg. Hermes, or both. Uh, I think his tablet's faster. It <laughs> is, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just like. <laughs> Any other discussion? Let's go to the board and vote. Motion passes unanimously. Mr. Chairman, next meeting will be February 7th. Uh, at 6 p.m. in room 118. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we have the nominating report. Chairman Mays. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, nominating committee met on January 3rd, uh, 2023. Uh, Commissioner Isbell made a motion to appoint Archie Burris, uh, reappoint Archie Burris as a member of the Board of Zoning Appeals with a term expiring 9-27. That was seconded by Commissioner Beauchamp. The motion passed for four. Motion passed to four to four com, uh, commission for approval. And I so move. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Let's go to the board and vote. Motion passes unanimously. 
And that is all from nominating. Thank you. And we had uh, number four added, uh, Commissioner Isabel, the Tourism Council. Yes. Uh, really, all I wanted is I wasn't able to make that meeting. It, it was at 3 o'clock in Oak Ridge. It's my full intention. But what I was looking at is the amount of people that actually voted for their budget, not question their budget, is just to make sure that we had enough people there as far as rules. And I was going to ask Jay and not even put it on there to make sure, but I just want to make, because we only had, I think if there's 20 members, is that it, or 21, 21 members? And I'm sorry, I was just coming in the door. What was the question? Oh, uh, about the uh, um, amount of people that was there at the meeting. At the Tourism Council meeting yeah. last week? Mm -hmm. Our, our, con our um, bylaws um, eight constitutes a quorum. Okay, that's really to our bylaws. I wanted to make sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. The, the website shows two vacancies. Do you are the, you still have vacancies? We do have two vacancies right now, um, because of the changeover with um, with the mayor in Oliver Springs. So I'm communicating with them to see if the mayor wants to serve or if he wants to appoint someone. And then we had someone just recently resign uh, because they sold their business. So okay. they had a tourism related business and uh, so we do have that vacancy could you, on the board. Could you review the, the, the board members that are on the website? Because I think one or two might be wrong I think, or incomplete. I, I did and I think that I sent a new list to did Annette you? because I don't think that it got republished. I don't think the correct one is on the website. Okay. All right. So I'll resend that to her. Um, but our board is made up of of the county mayor, two county commissioners, a representative from all five cities, a representative from all three chambers, a representative from Explore Oak Ridge, and a representative, I think that leaves about eight or nine positions that are representative of the tourism industry. Okay. So, all right, but I will, I will check that and make sure that it's up to date with Annette. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions? Commissioner Wendell. Uh, just to follow up, Commissioner Yeager, were you talking about the county website? Yes. Okay, so the county website's incorrect with the members. I believe so. Okay, I didn't know if you were talking about the tourism. No, I'm Tourism, you have a different website, correct? Yes, sir, and we don't list our members on there, but okay. we do have a different website. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Tourism Council? Okay. Uh, next, uh, any new business? Commissioner Isbell. Uh, thank you uh, again, Mr. Chairman. And I just want to recognize, uh, saw on the news where Mark Trout walked 54 miles today. Did anybody else see that? Yeah, it's like from Morristown to Clinton for Isaiah House. Did you see that, Mayor? Yeah, it was on the news as they were going out the door. And yeah, everybody needs to look that up. And you know, let's talk about that. I mean, that's, that's a quite an achievement one day. I think you left at five o'clock in the morning or something like that. Yeah, it was on the news. And the other thing is, is uh, the Charter Commission is still on our website. So I don't know if we should remove that. Remove it. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got a question about it the other day, and I said, well, we're all done with it. So, yeah. But that's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, somebody else have something? You're good. Um, and, I had one thing, just had a request for the rules committee to meet in February. So is there a specific time that meets during the month, usually Annette, or is that just as needed? Okay. And who's, um, you probably don't have that in front of you. Who, who's on, we've got like five members on the rules committee. Is that, I know Commissioner Mays, I think. Yeah, you're I think most of them meet, are on budget. So if, to accommodate them, if they wanted to have it around the same time budget meeting. I guess if we could, if we could get the the rules committee scheduled, just for the February calendar. Um, who else is on rules committee? Do you want to? Oh, okay. Uh, Tyler Mage, Michael Foster, Catherine Denenberg, Anthony Allen, and Bob Small. <laughs> After budget, close budget. <laughs> what what day is budget in February? Second Thursday. Second Thursday. Second Thursday. Oh, it 
week. First Thursday of a full week. Okay. What? So in February, it would be on the 9th. Well, would, okay, would February 9th at 5 o'clock? <laughs> they just need a quorum. You Yeah, we just need a budget. 5.30? Three thirty. Now you put a lot of open rules. <laughs> Commissioner Smallry. Yeah, I wanted to ask: Do uh, we have a lot of committees? And I was wondering: Do, do they all have an agenda that they send out? Because <clears throat> uh, I would love to. Sometimes there's some things you want to be sure and make a particular meeting, and you know I'd love to have a an agenda or knowledge of when when we're meeting when all these committees are meeting if that would be possible <clears throat> I'm not sure we have an agenda for every meeting uh, I think I know Annette gets those for, when they send out the agenda they send it to all commissioners send it, I'm sorry yes send it to all commissioners you know it'd be helpful so the rules is going to be at 5 o'clock <laughs> do, do you want to do 3.30 or or you think budget will be done? <laughs> They'll all be, most if, of them will be if there. If it so. is, then February will probably be the last month that it will be done in an hour because budget season's kicking into gear. Okay, so, so rules committee, room 312, February 9th at 5 p.m. In case budget goes long. Okay. Yeah, Commissioner Isbell. Okay, thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner Smallridge made a good point. And does he need to make that a motion? If that so, would, I will second it. That would yes. probably be good. Okay. Be, yeah, you want to glad to make that a yeah, motion. You want to hit push the button. Get me motion. Before Commissioner Mays hits it. <laughs> Just trying to speed the yeah, motion in a second. Uh, to you getting this, Annette? No. Yes, we got that. But now, now we're now we're giving you a, another job. To this is a mo the motion to send the the committee agendas for all committees to all commissioners. Yes. Yeah. So we, right. Just so everybody knows what's, what's everybody's in the loop. Uh, Commissioner Smallridge, seconded by Commissioner McCamey. All right. Let's go to the board and vote. Motion passes unanimously. Any old business, uh, Mayor Frank. Uh, no action needed, but I just wanted to apprise you uh, for the Highland Communication Agreement that you approved, um, we had to wait on the survey, and so we need to change the date of the execution of that agreement. So I uh, reached out to the law director, asked if we needed your approval on that, or if we just needed to apprise, and he said just apprise commission, but no approval necessary. So we'll adjust that date now that we have the survey. Thank you. Commissioner Wendell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I apologize I was late and I missed the um, portion on my good friend, Commissioner Whitey Hitchcock, and I just wanted to take a minute to say how much I appreciate his friendship and uh, his leadership. When he was on commission, he did a lot of things in a short amount of time. Um, he always did things that made our county better. Um, some of the things that popped in my mind is the uh, conservation board. Um, Whitey was instrumental in not only bringing the parks up to speed, but also bringing this body and all of the departments together. We'd have picnics at times during the summer, during those day meetings we'd have. And he did a lot there to bring that to where it is today. And I tip my hat to him there. And then the other thing that comes to the top of my mind 
was how well he served the people in our jail. Uh, he was instrumental in doing a lot of grant work himself uh, to get those justice grants moving to where we can help our people in the jail get back out and um, get, be productive citizens. And I'll never forget those. He always was committed to those things and always called him Dr. Shroom because he always messed with those mushrooms and I didn't know a thing about them. But <laughs> I found some one time and he told me how to cook them and they st still wasn't very good. <laughs> but, but, but I tried it anyway. So uh, just thoughts and prayers for him and his family and I appreciate you, you all recognizing him when you did and I appreciate you letting me talk to him. Sure. Yeah, they're old business. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Okay. Uh, operations Committee, I've served on that committee now for probably 10, 12 years, Jerry. <laughs> uh, we're always down at the bottom, and the Operations Committee is probably the second most uh, important committee, I think, after budget. And we're always down at the bottom, and a lot of times people are here that need to speak or, or just to find out how the votes went. I'd like to move that up on our agenda right under purchasing and budget uh, because it, it, it affects a lot of people and there's a lot of the county's business that goes on in operations that somebody have to come here and sit all night long to, you know, to get to hear what happened on operations. But we've always been down next to the bottom and it just wears people out. So I, I'd like to move that up. Move it to item six. Uh, under after, committee right reports, budget. under purchasing budget and then operations. Commissioner Yeager. Hey, we'll go on to something else. Okay. <laughs> you wanna make that a motion? Yes, I'll make that a motion. <clears throat> Got a second? Beat you. Uh, okay. <laughs> let's go to the board and vote. Oh, Comm yeah. Commissioner Wendell. I was just trying to delay from a friend here to vote. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, but, uh, oh, I thought you were doing No, but I was going to say maybe that would be two new rules under the Rules Committee to move, move, move. They can look at the structure of the agenda and then also the, the, the motion earlier about uh, having everyone get commissioners uh, get the agendas for all committee meetings. I'll yield my time to Commissioner Yeager. <laughs> That's exactly what I was looking for, sir. Thank you. Yeah, the, uh, the agenda has not really been followed according to the rules for some time anyway, so I think that really needs to be adjusted in general as well as a new new one to, to move the com committees around. But this, this shows uh, all committees should be at the bottom, and, and there, there are a lot of changes that need to be done. So I appreciate, appreciate that and uh, the Rules Committee uh, forming again. I think Commissioner Mays will do a great job on that committee. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we want to go ahead and vote on moving operations, and then maybe the Rules Committee will tweak this what, agenda. What does the Rules Committee say about that? It says it's supposed to be up towards Well, the yeah, it says all committees are down at the bottom. Yeah. And we, we adjusted purchasing for Catherine when she was pregnant and had to sit here for three hours for, for a two-minute thing. Then we moved Robbie up, too. So we just need to adjust the rules to, to align with the way we're doing it and also make changes. So this motion is in line with what the rules would be? No. Yes. <laughs> but hopefully it will be after February 9th. <laughs> 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 All right, let's go to the uh, Commissioner Foster. Yeah, so can we make a motion just to divert that to the Rules Committee so we can do this properly instead of just moving it up? Because there's a need to be adjustment. Are we okay with one more month of keeping it at the bottom? <laughs> we may not have a quorum at Rules Committee, so I, I'd suggest we go ahead with it. <laughs> That'd be my only thing, but the Rules Committee is going to review all the rules and committees. It seems like that'd be the perfect place for so it. So you're making that a... Deferral. Yes. Is defer this to. To the defer to rules committee. Do we have a second, Commissioner Bell? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't want to keep going around the mulberry bush on this, but <laughs> if I've learned anything by serving on this board over the last few years, is that we can change just about anything that we implement, 
Uh, there have been several meetings where we've started and we've made motions to change the order of the agenda to, time, to accommodate folks. So either way we're going, this is fine. I don't think it's the biggest issue maybe as we're worrying about, but I'd be okay with going ahead and voting on Commissioner McCamey's motion tonight because we can just change it next time for whatever reason it doesn't work out. Did we, did we have a second for the deferral? A second? Okay. So we need to vote on the, we're going to vote on the deferral motion. Who seconded? Uh, Denver. No, no, not on the deferral. Oh, okay. Did we have a second for? I thought you seconded. We got a defer. Hey, I'm behind the general. <laughs> <laughs> no second for the deferral motion. Okay, so motion fails for lack of a second. So let's go to the board and vote on Commissioner McCamey's motion of adjusting <coughs> operations, moving it up. Motion passes unanimously. Any other old business? Please say no, please say no, please say no. Okay. All right, we'll see you in February.